it's the week after Black Friday. And you know what? I think I can officially say it here in 2022. Black Friday's dead. Do you know why, Tara? Awesome. Do you know why? Because of the internet? Not one single fight story really? on Black Friday. You know what I did on Black Friday? I went and fed shelter cats. Yeah. And it was far more satisfying than anything I could have bought anywhere. There, there was like one or two little incidents. Like there's like a, a Walmart where two people got in a fight in the parking lot. And there was like an incident in Poundland in the UK where like three people got in a fight. But that's it. That was it. That's that's the entirety of no more stampedes, no more bull. It's over. It's over. I'm just I'm just still giggling at Poundland. Poundland, yeah. Still, it's 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 just bizarre that Black Friday is is done. It's it's like a, a reality of my life since I was a child, and now it's like it's over. Let's get the intro running. People don't understand. Pe people our age, people older than us and younger than us, do not understand what a weird fucking point in history we exist in. Like, you're in my generation is the only generation that has lived an entire life without social media and with social media. Yes. Like, we're the only generation that's lived both. And like... It just just weird shit like we're in such a weird place between like what the world that like the olds know and the world that the whippersnappers know that in mind <laughs> each week gathering radio dead air audience go out the worldwide interwebs find all sorts of horrible stuff bring it back here for a segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you? Before we get to, to all the terrible news, it's time once again to set this one up. Um, every year. This is this is because this is not like like our thing now. Yeah. It is it is, of course, I'm speaking of it's time for Goat Watch. Now, some of you who are just getting here, I don't know who you could possibly be. Welcome. I, 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 you know, new viewers love it. Um, it's time for Goat Watch. What is Goat Watch? Well, there is there's a town called Gavla in Sweden, and uh, every year they erect, <laughs> erect, um, a giant straw goat. Now, the reasons for this are esoteric and lost to the winds of time. I could not explain it to you. I actually probably could, but I don't care. Somebody um, in the YouTube as well. Yeah, someone will go into the history of this. But they do this every year. It's a Christmas tradition, <laughs> holiday tradition. They put up this giant straw goat. And a strange little war arises between the people who want the goat to stay up and the people who want to set the goat on fire. And in the many decades that the goat has been there, even still, even with the last few years, more times than not, the goat has been burnt to the ground. In any event, we, we, will, we will catalog as we always do. The goat is up. It is live. YouTube, they're explaining the goat to us in the chat. Yeah. It's just let him go. I bless her heart. So you can have fun. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Just explain. Bless you. Um, we're just gonna have to wait and see. Um, it's going to stay up until Jan early January. Uh, Does we'll it stay up until like Three Kings Day? I think. Yeah. So they're they're going to uh, see. Yeah, I will see how many years. All right. It's been up since. Uh, they started doing it in 1966, and the very first year they burnt the fucker down. Oh. 1966. Um, let's see how many times. One, two, you know? three. 
holy shit, the entirety of the 1970s. 1970 and 1979, they fucked it up. Um, 1980s, it only survived twice. The 90s, it only survived half. In 2000s, seven times it went down. The 2010s, it survived. It, it survived half of the 2010s. Now we're here. And out of three years of the 2020s, it's made it through two of, or well, one of them so far. I gotta say, if there was a goat that I would like to burn, uh-huh. if you were like, Tara, which goat would you like to burn? Like people ask me all the time. I would probably choose the ones from Love and Thunder because those were annoying as fuck and not funny. Yeah. Well. The straw one doesn't bother anybody. Well, Taika Waititi, well, welcome to, to his, his brand of humor. Screaming it, is, is hilarious. It worked in Ragnarok, but I don't know. It just didn't work the second time. Goats make terrible noises. It's hilarious. Okay. Okay, you're just gonna. Okay. Well, it was like the first time, but an hour later, when they're still doing it, it's a bit much. <sighs> All right, so let's get on to the regular stupid. It's it's weird that we don't have Black Friday, but we still have a whole bunch of idiots. See, we don't. Re- we re- we have nothing. I don't. No, no Black Friday. Not one. Not one. Black. I told you, it's dead. It's over. We won. I don't know how I feel about that. So this coming, this, this one, I am so pissed, especially coming so close on the heel of some very real fucking tragedies. How in the shit you thought, did you think you motherfucker? All right, let's get the, let's get the story up here. Victor. Uh, oh wait. Okay. Well, let's do this. Did one we, first. What? Did we ever do the intro? Yeah, we did the intro. We did the intro. All right, let's. This is the most crit. This is the most holiday one. Let's do this first. This guy wasn't quite so bad, but Victoria police officer was injured while trying to arrest a man at the Santa Claus parade Saturday. Already say office. Oh, that's the wrong. wrong story. Let me get the the the. Yeah, that's not the link you sent yeah, me. Let's get the other story. I'm just all kinds of professional tonight. Let's get this one. We'll, that's the uh, that's the second story. This is the first one. The intro. Authorities say officers were marching in the Pennsylvania Co-op Santa Claus Parade, uh, handing out candy canes when they were alerted to disturbance. A parade spectator approached members of the Victoria Police Department uh, to report a man had assaulted a member of the crowd and was walking to the crowd trying to instigate additional fights. So. It's the Santa Claus parade and dude decides it's time to challenge for supremacy. If you Billy can't Bob Thornton's not doing so good these days, huh? Say what? Billy Bob Thornton's not doing so good these days, huh? <laughs> like, the David Harbour movie's coming out and he's like, but I'm bad Santa. Yeah. What, who the fuck goes to a Santa parade and decides to be like, I am the champion, face me! Krampus? Is not among you man enough to fight me! <laughs> Someone in the back is like, I am no man, but... Different. What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, it's a holiday. The kids are there getting the candy canes. Yeah, nobody is going to. Nobody is like getting theirself really ripped. And this is not like a like a concert with like a fucking mosh pit. Even a mosh pit is not like this. No, no, no. What's no one's going to the Santa parade? Be like, I'm gonna get fucked up. I'm gonna fuck somebody up. Fucking Santa's gonna watch me. Yeah. I dare you put my ass on the naughty list, motherfucker. You want to some naughty shit, fat man? What the fuck are you doing? Are oh. you that lonely? They're that something. Because there's some people that like any attention, like negative attention is better than no attention, right? You think, man. 
this next one this this one is the one that sincerely pissed me off considering i was saying some real world events the fuck were you thinking connor anderson 30 fires six rounds at patrons and sm at smiles bar before running out no one hurt fucking miracle so he's a stormtrooper <laughs> Thank God. Could have ended far worse than it did. Moments after midnight Sunday morning, Connor Patrick Anderton, Anderson, patron at Smiles, the Palm Coast Bar, got angry with his girlfriend, allegedly pulled a gun at another patron, threatened her, and started shooting inside the pub, even as other patrons, the bartender, attempted to subdue him. Anderson ran out after firing a half dozen rounds. Six shots. Thank fucking Christ no one got hurt here. Anderson's anger was traced back to a moment earlier that night when he and his girlfriend were at the bowling alley where he got into a fight with another patron there. His girlfriend convinced him to leave. Both went to Smiles Nightclub, but Anderson's anger persisted. Once at the bar, he demanded to have the keys to his truck back. So she de-escalated the situation attempted to get him away from the fight yeah but then she took him to a bar yeah and like once, near once he gets there he's decided no no i want to continue what i was let's go back and continue that shit because everyone cares about it and no one's going to forget about it tomorrow i have to go kick his ass if i don't i will be shame mad forever and then I'm just going to shoot some random people. Like, the, the very thought that we are just after yet another couple of mass shootings, welcome to fucking America, and the idea that this is going to go down well is the thing that they just... What are they going to... remind you all mm. that the common bullshit trope is that Women can't run the world because we're too emotional. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you have this fucking guy. Somewhere in his, I don't know how brain work, not very good. Somewhere along the line, it was, if I shoot at them, they will acknowledge my superiority and allow me. They will allow me to do what I intended to do. This will be fine. There will be no consequences. I will continue onward because my life is exactly like a movie and I am the protagonist. Fuck! Also, maybe let's not, let's not go out and get shit hammered while we're carrying a firearm. Unfortunately, that's like an American pastime. I know, and I hate it. Yep. Uh, that's some more Florida here. Of course, we have more fun in Florida. We always have more fun in Florida. Um, and this is from Thanksgiving. It wasn't Black Friday, but uh, what the fuck? And, and oh, the mugshot. The mugshot makes me hate this woman because just you, you know what happened before this mugshot police stopped saint pete woman from driving range rover into path of runners in thanksgiving day race and look at that look at her at that mugshot what does that mugshot tell you just by looking at her she sucks that is a mugshot of how dare people tell me no. yeah how dare you she's got the red eyes from crying She's very mad. Y'all crunched up chin. She shouldn't be there. Don't you know who she is? Those people shouldn't have been in her way. St. Petersburg woman was stopped from driving her Range Rover into the path of runners during the coffee pot turkey trot Thanksgiving morning. Really? The coffee pot turkey trot? Okay, fine. Uh, after driving around officers and refusing commands to stop. 
Uh, it happened just before 8 a.m. Thursday. Uniform officers were parked. Their emergency lights activated. He said 38-year-old Ashley Lauren Morgan is going about. It's Ashley with two E's. There's no Y there. It's just Ashley. Take that as you will. I don't know why that, that makes me angry. Um, they said she was going about 60 miles per hour in her 2019 Range Rover as she approached 21st Northeast app. Now, I don't know if you know in America, or I don't know if you know kilometers, whatever. Um, you don't do, you are not allowed to do 60 miles per hour on city streets. That is typically reserved entirely for the interstate and the freeways. City streets, it's at generously 55 is the highest i've ever seen yeah standard is like 35 45 35 45 yeah um officer stopped morgan before she tried to pass them and drive into the roadway where nearly 3,000 runners had begun the sold out race morgan's arrest report said officers asked for her id but she quote refused ignores command of stop and fled the scene of the stop at an extremely high rate of speed on to the actual race course, putting further lives in risk. Morgan received her first charge of fleeing and eluding for the incident. Her second came when she allegedly waved off police posted on the side of the bridge. The rest report said Morgan acknowledged an officer through her driver's side window, but placed her hand up in the air in a dismissive manner and fled from him as well. Morgan responded to witnesses in the area with anger. She eventually began a several point turn to leave the area. I like how they phrase that a several point turn, <laughs> not a three point turn, a several point backing into a stop sign on her way. <laughs> she got back to the intersection of bright waters and Lamar officers were finally able to bring her to a stop when she was under arrest. Uh, officers say Morgan continued to be defiant. When she was in the backseat of the cruiser, cruiser, an officer said she kept banging her head on the window. Later, an officer was adjusting Morgan's handcuffs. Morgan put her feet out of the car door and refused to bring them back inside. Faces charged. Your child. Face charges of reckless driving, resisting an officer, two counts of fleeing and eluding police, and leaving the scene of a crash with property damage. What the entire? Fuck, lady. Like, I understand, Ashley. Ashley. That you, are, that you are the most important person on the planet. Yeah. But the thing is that you're not. You're, not. you're just another fucking idiot like the rest of us. I like, think what you like, think what you will about the cops. But if they have blocked a road... It's usually for a reason. Mm -hmm. They're not doing like it just to fuck with you. And lights and a roadblock. It's usually not just because they're bored that day. Yeah. It's for a reason. Just this. The, the fucking look on her face. Just fuck you. I, this is someone who has never faced consequences in their goddamn life. Every chain of event along this way was, how dare you? I'm in the right here, and you're going to realize that eventually. She's going to catch up on all of that now. The, the several point turn is what killed me. I mean, we've all done it. We've all done the Austin Powers in the hallway 100 point turn because we fucked up. But you like to think nobody's looking. <laughs> and, crashed. and you definitely don't want to be doing that after you've already made a spectacle of yourself. It crashed into a stop sign <laughs> while she was at it, too. Uh. Maybe you shouldn't be driving, Ashley. Um, this next one is South Carolina, and uh, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say living here. It, 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 I'm sorry. Um, I miss Illinois. That's what I'm saying. That, that, that's what I should be saying here. Fucking Miss Illinois. Okay. <sighs> Fucking hell. Man pleads to tattooing minor inside McDonald's. 
South Carolina. Is that what do? I, I, I don't think so. That, that would be amazing if it was, but South Carolina man has pled guilty of charges. He gave a minor a tattoo while seated at a table in the dining room of the McDonald's restaurant. Brandon Presha, 29, last month cop to a pair of misdemeanor counts in connection with the illegal inking at a McDonald's in Lawrence, about a city about 35 miles south of Spartanburg. And Spartanburg is just, if you don't know the geography, Spartanburg is already in the middle of fucking nowhere. So to be 30, it's, it's fairly, it, it's large-ish, but it's way the hell out there. And to be 35 miles south of there is to be like, that is... But a ding, 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 ding. Um, seen at night at right, uh, pressure was convicted of tattooing a minor and tattooing without a license. He was sentenced to nine months in custody. Um, judge suspended execution of the term in favor of 18 months probation supervision. I ordered to perform 30 hours community service. Police learned of the Mick tattooing, really. Uh, after a female customer frustrated by a Friday night backup in the drive through line peered into the restaurant and spotted Presha applying a tattoo to the minor's arm. When recorded Presha in action and the video clip was subsequently sent to cops, as she filmed, the patron complained that Presha and the tattoo recipient were out here doing tattoos instead of getting food orders out. The minor who Presha tattooed was an employee at the McDonald's. According to police, Precious tattooing collar was not the first time he's been arrested at McDonald's location. <laughs> in October 2020, he was busted for allegedly stabbing a man twice during a confrontation in the bathroom. Really? Just, ba -ba -ba -ba. Just eat at home. <laughs> <laughs> like, my dude, maybe stop going to the fucking McDonald's. I mean, at least he's back down from the trying to kill people. Yeah, that's good. To just giving the employees tattoos on the clock. I, oh, I cannot think like that's all I'm thinking is just all of the infections you could potentially get. Means I have three. But I know that you have to keep them real clean, especially that first day. Like, sometimes they, they even wrap it in saran wrap and shit and tell you, like, don't take it off for a few hours. Because, like, you have poked millions of little holes in the skin and stuff. And a McDonald's kitchen probably isn't the best or environment. the dining for room. No, no, I know yeah. people, people are going to get mad. Working. People are if gonna... she was working, chances are she was going back to the kitchen. True. People are going to get mad at me about this, but a McDonald's dining room. People let their kids run loose in the McDonald's dining room. And kids, they you, you might love them. They might be the most precious thing in your world. They, petri they, legs. they are disease vectors. They put their hands on everything. Their mouths in their mouth. their, their hands in their mouths and then put it on everything. Yeah. Everything. And it's not even like a bad parrot. It's like you blink, you like turn around for two seconds and they're up there like, you know, with like straws up their nose and shit. You're like, where the fuck did you get those? How did I you even do that? It's waiting to happen. Oh, boy. We're getting into the weird shit now. Um. You know, if Jesus actually did stuff like this, it would kind of be hilarious. But he doesn't. Jesus uh, told her to open the plane door. Woman flying from Houston bit someone on flight in effort to open plane door at 37,000 feet. Thanks. Woman who uh, the FBI said forced a Southwest Airlines plane from Houston to Columbus to make an emergency landing in Little Rock, Arkansas. Said it been like, what? That's the crime. That is training um, everybody in fucking Arkansas. Said in mid-flight that Jesus told her to open the plane door. Documents released by uh, the U.S. District Court for Eastern District of Arkansas say the 34-year-old walked to the back of the plane where she, quote, stared at the exit door. Court documents sketch the scene. A flight attendant then told the woman to either use the bathroom or sit down. 
The flight attendant said the female pastor asked two flight attendants if she could look out the window. She received a negative response. She forced her way past the flight attendant and began to pull the handle of the exit door in an attempt to open the door at 30,000 feet. Now, just so you know, it's physically impossible to open that door while the plane's in flight. It's pressurization. You cannot open that door. Just the sheer yeah. physics. Yeah, the sheer physics of it. You, you could not push the door out. It won't work. So you That's don't, one I can just cross off the list because I legitimately worry about that. It, it won't work. Uh, if someone were by some miracle to break the window, that would be a thing. But that door is not coming open while you're in flight. It just the physics of it won't allow it. However, fucking with the door is still that's illegal. Yeah. Um, pastor, who overheard someone saying she's trying to open the door with the rear plane to help detain the woman, wrestling her to the ground, not for, swore she bit the passenger on the thigh and apparently held on. Continued to bite the victim until the victim worked their fingers up to her jawline and attempt to have her release the bite, which she eventually did. Like a dog, man. Like you have to, you know, you have to get behind a dog, like let go, let go. It's like a dog, man. Um document says when the woman began hitting her head on the plane floor and later said, Jesus told her to fly to Ohio, and Jesus told her to open the plane door. Woman accused told authorities she planned to go to Maryland to stay with a family friend who was a pastor. Detective says she left home on Saturday without telling her husband to not bring any luggage and was traveling alone. She had not flown in a long time, could not recall the last time she had flown. Doctor says she claimed she could not breathe in the plane and decided to get up from her seat. She also said she has anxiety and became very anxious and normally would not have done those things. Okay. I know anxiety. No. Yeah, that's anxiety does not bring you messages from the fucking Lord. Just really big fan of people also just trying to blame their horrifying actions on a mental illness so that like people like me who have depression and anxiety, everybody gives the side eye to. Yeah. No, honey, that's not why you did it. Jesus, let's just drink, drink some fucking water. Let's just presuppose Jesus. Let's 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 take that as as accepted for, for the purposes of this. Jesus. Okay. Fine. Part of the triumvirate, di the, you know, the, the the Father, Son, Holy Ghost, fucking omnipotent, all the. Why does he want you to open the plane door? I mean, it would be a weird coincidence if the entire plane was full of tax collectors. <laughs> and money changers. <laughs> then maybe, like, if they were all going to the IRS convention, yes. maybe you have a case. I've, I've said this before. Jesus is not a prankster. He's not fucking with people for fun. He's not like, hey, God. Dad, Dad, watch it. Fucking watch this shit. Watch this fucking. I just watch this. You know what's funny though? My mom really thought that God was. My mom kind of thought God was a vindictive dick. <laughs> Ten years before my dad died, he had what's called a triple A. It's an abdominal aortic aneurysm. Most people never make it to the surgery table. There were by the grace of God, my dad made it. And while he was in, he was in uh, ICU for six weeks. And I had come down from Connecticut to see him. And I was sitting in the waiting room with my mom. And she, she said, I have to tell somebody what happened. I think this is all my fault. And I'm like, you think you gave dad an aneurysm? I'm fascinated to hear how you did that. The, cem the Catholic cemetery in which they are buried was having a sale on burial plots. I didn't know that was the thing that went on sale. But apparently it is. Black Friday. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. My mom, my mom was a planner. She was very pragmatic. And she was like, you know, we're both getting up in years. So I bought us plots. And then I figured, I don't want you guys to have to worry about a headstone. So I just bought us a headstone. Ten years before my parents died, there was a headstone with their name on it in the cemetery. Creepy. Yeah. Creepy. Hated it. But she's like, and I think I just, you know, I think... I think somehow God just thought maybe I wanted him to go. And I'm like, mother, 
<laughs> M- mother, are, are you telling me that you know, it was a little crazy? I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. It was a little, little, little too type A for me. But you're, what you're telling me is that you believe in and worship a God mm. who you overplanned a little was like, fine, fuck your husband. Why are we going to church? <laughs> that guy sounds like an asshole. So, you know, maybe it's not. It's not outside the realm of theories I've heard. Well, OK, OK, OK. Maybe let's just your mom's right. <laughs> Maybe let's let's give her that. All right. So let's what about let's try something else. Let's try Buddhism. Except um, problems there, too. Every monk in Thai temple defrocked after testing positive for math. Whoa. Buddhist temple in central Thailand has been left without monks after all of its holy men failed drug tests and were defrocked. Four monks, including an abbot at a temple uh, in Pachuba, Pachuban, I think I'm saying that right, uh, province district tested positive for methamphetamine on Monday. Monks have been sent to a health clinic to undergo drug rehab. The temple is now empty of monks and nearby villagers are concerned they cannot do merit making. Merit making false worshippers donating food to monks as a good deed. Someone was donating. Because... A lot of a lot of Buddhist monks end up morbidly obese because they can't not eat food that is yeah. offered to them. That's somebody else's act of sacrifice. And so they have to eat whatever is given to them. And it winds up really bad for. Them. Uh, Boonler said monks will be sent to the temple to allow the villagers to practice their religious obligations. What the fuck? What the sh- I cannot even. Follow the chain of events. You are bad at your job. Your job is Buddhist monk. I mean, did the Buddha say anything about not doing this? I'm pretty sure it's something in there. I mean, I know you're, you have to be a vegetarian, but like meth is not a living thing. Strictly speaking, now I'm not an expert on Buddhism. Tell me if I'm wrong, but strictly speaking, I don't think this is against any rules. <laughs> if you're not hurting anybody. <laughs> well, obviously. Now you, could argue, you could argue that the drug dealers are probably hurting somebody and therefore it's bad for your connection to the divine and your reincarnation. But just doing the math, I don't think technically is... It's math! We have documented. We have years. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm just saying I don't think it makes them bad monks. I'm pretty sure it does. (laughs) I'm I'm pretty... I'm... Oh, oh, okay. Buddhists are not allowed to take any intoxicants. And meth absolutely qualifies. Stand corrected. Like then, yes, they are not doing great at the monk thing. Like that's like your job is Buddhist monk. You are bad at your job. Like just what if this was some kind of side though? Because like like I said, like if people make offerings of food, they have to eat them, right? So what if somebody laced all the food with meth? No, no, and got all the monks hooked. No. Just to try and take down the temple. No. It's it's sort of like that, that thing with Halloween with, with the fentanyl. Do you really yeah. think the drug dealers are just giving away their drugs? Here, because weed is legal, people get real paranoid about you giving their kids THC gummies. And everyone's like, do you know how expensive those are? We're not wasting those on your child. Fuck your kids. <laughs> Put the fucking gummies for myself. Fuck your kids. Yeah, it's just the whole temple. They had to find they had to find replacement substitute monks. I didn't even know that was a fucking thing. Well, I imagine it's like a visiting priest. You know, I grew up Catholic. Your priest goes on sabbatical or gets sick. They bring in a priest from somewhere else to cover. Just imagining the, the Buddhist monk 
<laughs> instead of doing the the meditation, they wheel in a television and they can watch a movie. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> as long as it's not seven years in Tibet. <laughs> so. Oh, what have we learned? Well, we leave legitimately learned monks cannot do math. That, that is, is that is a thing I learned. And thank you for that. We've learned a real thing. Monks cannot do math. They're bad at their job. We've learned Jesus does not want you to open the plane door, sweetie. No. And if he does, maybe you need to rethink your relationship with Jesus. I know that's controversial to say. But he doesn't seem like a good friend if he's telling you to do things like that. We've learned that you don't want to get a tattoo in the McDonald's. Of the McDonald's, maybe. In the McDonald's, no. Uh, you want churches on your butt? Live your best life. Get it somewhere sterile. We've learned, despite what you may have been led to believe your entire life, you are not the most important person out there. And yes, the consequences will find you. eventually. And that also includes firing a gun willy-nilly. That's, that, that's, does nothing is improved. No situation. No confrontation is improved. It's it's not going to be like, oh, okay, I, I had a problem, but then you fired the gun, so, you know, we're cool. Okay. I just want to say, if you are ever dating somebody and they are carrying a gun and get drunk, leave them. Yeah. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. And finally, we've learned you, it's, it, you're not going to be... St- if you're going to a Santa parade to start shit, rethink some things. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ, there are easier and less stupid ways to get on the naughty list. Maybe that's why Jesus wanted that lady to open the plane door, because that other guy tried to ruin his birthday. You're at the best birthday ever! 